the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. Hey, welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. My name is Walter Beatty, and I am the baseball lifer. Baseball lifer on Twitter, baseball lifer 11 on Twitter, baseball lifer here on YouTube. And we're here again to kind of get into some questions that some parents have that I'm able to answer and, and help with. I give my thoughts based on my experiences in my perspectives as a parent that has gone through this with two sons that are now in their late 20s, early 30s, uh, and they have children of their own, former player, former college coach, uh, but most importantly, having lived this as a dad at an extremely high intense level, uh, I, I, I like to offer inset, insight back uh, to parents all across the country. And today we have somebody in my backyard, so to speak, we have Gary from Western Massachusetts. Uh, Gary, welcome aboard. Thank you for joining us today. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate your time. And, you know, the big thing is you and I were kind of getting talking a little bit earlier, and I know that you have a son that kind of is following the same path as my youngest son did. So what can we help you with today? Yeah, so, um, you know, my son goes to uh, a prep school, and um, we are, are luckily blessed Um He's a left-handed pitcher, so it's the gift that, that keeps on giving, um, so to speak. Um, so we're in the, I guess, the, the blessed, the enviable spot of having multiple offers, um, mainly Ivy League, um, but also, um, you know, Big Ten school, uh, hopefully, fingers are crossed, um, a couple of high, uh, high academic ACC schools. And really, we got one really good offer from a CAA school, um, and we don't know, is it tacky, is it, how do we go about, you know, that's a great offer, but the school that he really would like to go to didn't offer him, just offered him academic money. Is there a way to go back to them and say, you know, we need a little bit more? Can you add scholarship money without, you know, you know, insulting them? Um, you know, and do we let them know that we got money from somewhere else and where we stand? You know, that whole thing because we don't want to, you know, step on toes or, or or whatever. I guess. Right. Well, that's a you are in an enviable position. Most parents would like to have one offer for their son, and when you have multiple offers. Ultimately, it boils down to we. you want to create a leverage point. Uh, and, and your son is a, a junior this year, correct? That is correct, yeah. Okay, so really, um, over the summer, up into and through next summer, you kind of want to rank the schools in order of desirability for you as a family, more importantly, for your son. In other words if we were to say there were five schools that had sub submitted offers, you want to come to that conclusion by the start of next summer. Okay. In order of priority, whether it be academic, academic and opportunity, um, you know, distance logistics, uh, and obviously most importantly, academics. Uh, for instance, I had one young man that was similar situation as a catcher. He wanted engineering and knew that Cornell uh, was the top engineering school in the world. And so he ultimately used time to create leverage, meaning he got a little bit older, a little bit stronger. And he had, he was a switch hitting catcher. So as more teams began to circle around and offer uh, different packages, it created leverage. Very similar in your case, because you have a left-handed pitcher, I would be willing to say time is your friend. And by slowing the process down and allowing your son to mature physically, obviously academically as well, but physically, meaning that 10 to 15 pounds that's going to happen over the next 12 months, that's your friend. That's your son's friend. Because behind that, obviously, an increase in velocity. Left-handed pitchers are at an absolute premium. It, for years, the elite left-handed pitchers would get plucked out of the draft and kind of taken by Major League Baseball, i.e. Tom Glavin. We could go down the line within New England. Jeff Locke comes to mind. Jeff uh, was from New Hampshire, was a second-round pick. 
the left-handed pitcher, you hold the leverage. So as it comes to stature from, say, conference-wise, it's really best to start looking at, okay, what is an Ivy League education? What is a NESCAT education? Or as you alluded to, the ACC, i.e., let's go Duke, Virginia. We could throw BC in there if we wanted to. Those high-level academic institutions that upon graduation, regardless of how my baseball career went in college, I know when I leave there, I, I, I have an opportunity to, to get into the workforce at a, at a higher, higher level. But let's talk about leveraging money. A lot of the best money that he'll be able to access is academic. And so the, the, I don't know whether he's taken the ACC or the SAT, big proponent of the ACT if you can, because you can take that multiple times. And if you super score it, there's always money that's attached to higher higher scores. Um, the other aspect of this is depending upon the, the curriculum and the, and the strength of your transcript, a lot of that through the appeal process. So here's something I want you to understand. You won't know until your senior fall, once you start to submit applications, and obviously there's a FAFSA process, but with regard to baseball, when you are assigned or, or you're given X number of as an award within the first, say, November through December, uh, you can appeal, you can accept an appeal. You go through that process and nine times out of 10, you're going to get additional money. But as you're getting into next summer, where you become that rising senior and based on a good spring and you have a, good, a relatively good summer, there's a lot of leverage that starts riding on your son's left arm uh, because the stronger that he looks, the better that he performs, the more schools become, they get aggressive because again, left-handed pitching. So my advice to you is you're working like you have a full house and you're really hoping to catch, you know, you're hoping to catch that four of a kind. And the odds are, the odds are in your favor because A, I'm left-handed, B, I play in a very advanced high school conference. So you have a position of strength. And so therefore, a lot of college coaches, and I mean most everyone that I speak with, they're telling student athletes to slow the process down, take advantage of those five official visits. Now, your son will get that opportunity next fall. And so starting in the fall, take the five officials, go down and be on the sideline of a football game, regardless of what school and where they are. They'll pay for the travel. They pr pay for the hotels, the food, et cetera. Take advantage of that and allow your son to be engaged on the campus. And also at that time, those other schools are no, they're in the know that you're taking those other official visits. So sometimes you'll show up on a campus and they might have offered you academic plus uh, maybe 40% ath athletic. In some cases now you're dealing with image and likeness money, you know, so there's a lot of variables there as well. But when you take those official visits, you're essentially telling a school that you as a student are in control of your decision, that this is something that matters. You're, you're able to slow it down. You're able to kind of gauge where the best fit is for you. So my suggestion would be stay the course. You don't have to really get into the dialogue with regard to money. If a college coach is asking your son, what is it going to take? If your son answers positively about the school, if he has an interest, but if he says, I'm slowing my process down, I'm going to really take next summer and fall with my family to take my official visits to get a feel for how I feel on that campus within the student body. At that point, coaches know, okay, we're going to have to get a little bit more aggressive. Plus, money becomes available. MLB draft, somebody signed that they didn't think was going to sign. Somebody that was supposed to transfer, transferred somewhere else. And so when those situations occur, it's a positive to those that were patient. So my thought process with your son is he's not a middle infielder. He's not a, a run of, there's not a whole bunch of these guys sitting out there. So my guess is a strong academic 
strong left-handed pitcher with some ability to not only pitch but be successful in the classroom is going to you know kind of command uh some additional funds uh as you're getting into that senior fall next year okay well that's that's yeah good good information where does he play travel ball where yeah what for what team oh uh the connecticut capitals okay our- so, so i know that group and they're great great, they're great. people uh, and I mean, that's a program that you can feel comfortable with that he's going to play in great tournaments. But the biggest thing is, is prepare for the unexpected. And by that, I mean, next summer, so many things change during the summer. Coaching staffs, they change. Players transfer unexpectedly. There's now multiple time periods throughout the year that a student athlete can transfer. All that plays into the favor of a student athlete that slow plays his recruiting process and manages his own recruiting process because so many are impatient and they kind of settle for lesser money or lesser opportunities. Whereas your son is coming from strength, both academically and athletically, which is a powerful pair. So my suggestion to you would be absolutely wait till next spring and summer, start to talk to those college coaches that are kind of getting in and flying in and kind of watching the game spring aggressive in the summer. You may play that and figure up at a school. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's just, yeah, he's got a couple that he really likes. He's just, it's almost like they're slow playing him. <laughs> it's the ones that he like the top two on his list, but, uh, you know, the, the one that uh, he would really like also didn't uh, really come through with the scholarship money, more af- academic, you know, which is which is fine, but um, it's still more than the one one school offered him 90 percent. And it's like, geez, you know, how do you turn down 90 percent? Well, this school, you know, this school is a top 15 school in the country versus, you know, that one's a top 50 school in the country. But, you know, you know it's just trying to figure out. Well, the big thing is, is schools understand today's student athlete, today's family. I won't say impatient, but they always look to their right and left. And this one committed, that one committed. I have to commit. I got to commit now. Time's running out. There's not going to be any opportunities. That's not the case. The, The reality is those that are in control of this situation and know who they are as a student athlete, they control the tempo of the recruiting. So very quickly over the next six to seven months, you'll start to see coaches get a little bit more aggressive, especially if velocity ticks up or pitchability ticks up, but stay, stay with me and, you know, ask me anytime as far as, you know, we'll talk privately with regard to different schools and relationships that I have with some different coaches, all of that stuff can be discussed but most families just kind of react based on, we don't want to lose that opportunity. They're going to take it back. They're not going to take it back on an academic left-handed pitcher. It's just, not, especially somebody uh, in the conference that your son plays at uh, now with at Exeter. So like, you know, Gary, anytime you need any help, anytime your son needs any help, whether it's talking with, uh, you know, college coaches or talking and creating a plan, I'm happy to help in any way. And the Connecticut Capitals are a tremendous travel organization. Yeah, thank you. Greatly appreciate it. You're very, very welcome. Gary, thank you for coming and thank you for talking with us today. Best of luck with your son over the course of the next year and a year and a half. Want to remind parents, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. I will answer personally each question. You can hit the like button if you like what we talked about today. Absolutely subscribe to the channel so you can keep keep up to date with all the videos that we have and, and interviews that we have. Thank you, Gary.